Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dagny. In this video today, we're going to go over some tips and tricks that I have that I have acquired over years of dancing and now teaching that will help you learn more quickly and effectively. I'm going to add the blog post that I used to inspire this video down below, so check out the description box if you want to see that link. The first tip that I have is to find your why. This sort of goes for any task that you do. If you have a good motivation behind doing the activity, you'll be much more likely to do the work that's required to get better at it. And so for you, it might be learning a social dance so you can meet some more people or just perfecting your craft already. For me, I had an injury and that caused a major setback in my dancing. And so just trying to get back to my former strength and work on my technique has also been a, a major motivator for me. So really finding out your why and why you want to improve is going to help re redirect you and make sure that you achieve your goals. My second tip is that if you can go slow, you can go fast. And what I mean is that everybody seems to want to do the step as quickly as possible and it totally makes sense. It's so much fun to execute a step well really quickly, but if you're struggling with the step, it might be good to try to do it slowly first. If you can really break it down into all of its separate components and fully understand the entire sequence slowly, you can most definitely do it fast and often it requires even more technique and strength to do the series of steps slowly that it does quickly. So check that out to see, you might be rushing a little bit too much and slowing it down will really help figure out where the bumpy parts are. And my next tip is to turn off the music if you're trying to learn some steps. I find that listening to the music sometimes distracts me if I'm trying to figure out a certain step that I don't understand. Just similarly to writing something, you can't listen to music with lyrics. It's distracting to listen to music, so try to avoid any extra stimuli. If you're really trying to work on a problem and you can't figure it out, turning off the music might help you solve that problem. My next point is to turn on the music, and I know this is a little bit contradic contradicts. contradicts what I just said, except my point now is when you're listening to music and familiarizing yourself with the music that you will be dancing to later, that can really help you feel more confident on the dance floor. Okay, my next tip is super, super important, and this is something that I learned in ballet. It's to stand behind the teacher when a combination is being given. Often, in tango classes at least, people tend to stand in a circle. So the students will be around the teacher or the teachers in the center giving the combination and the sequence of steps. However, that means that the students that are directly facing the teacher don't have their brain in the same orientation and I found that when I was doing ballet simply turning my body even if that meant like looking over my shoulder so I'm sort of in the same orientation as the teacher really 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 helps me to just first orient my brain and then learn the steps because turning your brain around and trying to learn the steps at the same time can be quite tricky so move where you need to move it's not silly go go to the spot that you need to because often people are kind of just worried and they can't really see so well and they'll just stand there and try to absorb it but the class is there to help you so really take advantage of it when you're there in person and go go where you need to go to see what you need to see and it's not silly take advantage of the time that you have there my next point is to explore on your own. If there's something that you feel like you need to work on, doing self-practice is super helpful. That way, when you go into the partnership, you'll be able to express yourself fully and not feel insecure about you know, what, whatever it is that you want to work on. We're never going to be perfect and we're never going to achieve our technical perfection. So don't worry about trying to achieve some sort of level of perfection, but really just see what it is that you specifically need to work on. That might be balancing, that might be being a little bit more precise with your steps, and for everybody it will be a little bit different. So self-practice to work on those weaker points is fantastic to do alone. And of course, if you're going to work alone, working with a partner is also really great. So working on a step outside of class with the person can really help reinforce the concepts that you learned. It may not first click when you're actually in the class, but working through it with somebody can really help you get some insight, get some feedback, and work out the little concepts that you didn't quite understand the first time. And lastly, I want to say to bring your dancing to the next level to support your dance with other forms of exercise and stretching and mobility. And this is completely optional, but I find that when I feel better and I'm moving more, that my dance is improving. And also, 
it's great in tango that we don't have to be super flexible but if you want to bring your dancing to the next level having a little bit more mobility especially in the center area so that way you can dissociate a little bit better and maybe for the ladies making sure that your hips are a little bit looser helps with the baleos front and back um, that's just something else that you could do although it's not required for tango which I love so if you found these video tips Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me through this whole video. I hope you enjoyed it and found some of the tips useful. Check out the description box below again if you want to see the blog post, that way you don't have to write anything down. Don't forget to leave a like for the video and subscribe so you don't miss any future posts. And thanks for sticking with me through this journey as I get more comfortable talking in front of the camera. I'll see you next time. Bye.